Welcome to Die Try and Build Something New. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Michael Hand. And you brought the suitcase. Excellent. Yesterday you told me you had a great project to do. Yes. You wouldn't tell me what it is, but you made me go to a thrift store and buy old luggage. I said we need to go to a thrift store. You said there was one on the way to the office and yep. you would go there. And you brought a perfect example of a classic 70s Samsonite tourister suitcase, which by the way, unlike older vintage luggage, has not gotten incredibly expensive, which makes it perfect for this project. What's the project? We got an email from Jesse in Pennsylvania. Hey, Die Trying Gang, I've been looking into building a stereo suitcase. I want to make it myself instead of buying similar online custom models. So to use four ohm or eight ohm components. Can you go over wiring a charging switch? Thanks, Jesse in Pennsylvania. Jesse, this is awesome. I've been seeing these around. They've been showing up at the flea market. Uh, like one of the big flea market stores where they sell all sorts of crazy stuff, some vintage, some not vintage, and some people making stuff they made, and this has been a thing recently. I don't know where it started, I didn't do the search on the internet, but I've been finding these showing up, like apartment therapy kind of stuff, websites, and it's basically... You're making a boom box out of a suitcase, right? Bingo. That's awesome. It's truly awesome. I love awesome. that idea. It's so much fun. It's so easy. Jesse, go with eight ohm speakers. Basically, the lower the ohm rating, the harder it is for your amp to drive it. You're probably gonna use an inexpensive amp for this project because it's gotta fit inside of a suitcase and not overeat and overeat. Do amps overeat? Not they, usually. They're hungry. They are hungry little creatures. I would suggest car speakers. The more efficient the speaker is in terms of the SPL rating, the more sound you're gonna get out for a given wattage that's pumped mm. into the speakers. So look for something closer to like 91 dB uh, rather than something like 85 dB. Or just find speakers in your house, strip speakers out of an old speaker, you know, in mom's backyard, ask mom first. But basically, get a couple speakers. And <laughs> we actually, where did it go? Uh, Somewhere around here is a Lapai T-Class amplifier. They sell for $15 to $19 on Amazon.com. We talked about them on Texilla. They're pretty impressive, especially for the price. They sound good, they don't cost much, and it will be easy to fit inside of your case. And now, hole saws. Let's do it. All right. So we got the holes for the speakers drilled, and look, I'm gonna say this like four more times, but we made this project more complicated by me using separates with a crossover, using mm -hmm. a standard pair of like six and a half inch car stereo speakers would make this much easier to wire because there'd be one wire to the left speaker and one wire to the right speaker. And you left me alone for a little bit, so <laughs> I when like I'm alone, things are done easily. I like to think that you rapidly prototyped an efficient method for mounting the amplifier in place. And so right now the amp is in place with cardboard and duct tape. So we might, for, for the second episode of this, clean that up a little bit, but I understand you've actually grown quite attached to this creation. I think it works perfectly. It's very stylish. Yeah, but basically beyond mounting everything in here, we mm -hmm. just wired it up so left wires went to the left speaker, right wires went to the right speaker, um, and then we just have this crossover in between to yeah. go to the tweeter. And and, but what we found out is when we got everything bolted down really tight, the low end radically improved on this. So make sure the speakers are mounted tight, make sure they're wired correctly, make sure the polarity isn't reversed, and make sure the wiring is secure if you're actually planning on moving around with this because there's nothing more embarrassing than carrying your unbelievably cool portable powered suitcase and having the audio stop and having to open the latches up and rewire something on the inside. Uh, and we're gonna work on actually uh, getting the wire or I should say the wiring cleaned up, uh, if only so everybody in Amplified and the rest of the internet universe that touches stereo equipment doesn't mock us uh, every time they see us. So we went with the larger suitcase, so there's plenty of room for a battery in here when we on, want to add it. Oh, we could put a projector or a screen inside of it and make it a, a portable Netflix viewing box. That'd be amazing. That would be sick. By the way, Netflix, if you haven't tried it out, is unbelievably awesome. It's basically a flat monthly fee all the movies, television shows, and documentaries you can take down. And you know what? I like Netflix. I've been a customer for a long time. And you can be a customer if you go to netflix.com slash DIY. And you'll not only find an unbelievable deal on just awesome entertainment, but you'll be supporting the show and making sure Michael and I get to keep creating stuff for you week after week after week. Oh, that actually sounds really good. I'm just happy it works. So, Jesse in Pennsylvania, do not get upset because you're noticing two of the things you asked about in here are not in here. But we'll get to that next week. Absolutely. Part of the reason we want to do this is one, first of all, you got to make sure your speakers freaking work, right? Mm -hmm. But make sure your speakers work, your amp work, your enclosure works. 
Uh, and then start dealing with, you know, maybe taking a five pound sealed lead acid battery and figuring out a way to charge it. Yeah. Um, because one, you need to make sure you have a big enough battery so your amp doesn't draw two amps in like 10 minutes and drain your battery and you end up with no more music, which would really suck. And two, you wanna make sure you set it up in a way that you can actually charge it without lighting your house on fire. This is a big <laughs> thing where I come from. Yeah, so, so this is very much prototype phase where everything's working, we know it's good, we'll make it It nice. sounds really good. It does sound really good, actually. <laughs> I'm getting really happy about that. Yeah. So we will talk more about that next week. Uh, we would love very, very much if you want to comment down below. Uh, well, duh, if you're on YouTube, comment down below. <laughs> YouTube.com slash yeah. die Please subscribe. It's the right thing to do. Or if you want to email us like Jesse did, go to die or email dietrying at revision3.com. We try to answer everyone. Yes, and you can go to dietrying.com, search for us on iTunes, we're everywhere. Please. And share. Oh, yeah, and at uh, dietrying, if you want to tweet at us, we do our best to follow along. We can talk about that boat project. Well, we can't talk about the boat project. There's a secret boat project that is coming very soon. Oh Maybe goodness. in like a week and a half. Viking funeral? Maybe. I'm not involved with that, but if you want to do that. You've never had a Viking funeral? No. Really? I thought you only get one. Well, I mean like somebody else's. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I'm Michael Han. I'm Patrick Jordan. We'll see you next week on Die Trying. I want to know who put the ball peen hammers in with the Forstner bits and the router bits. <laughs> Parents are going to be like, are you doing drugs? I'll be like, no, I've discovered double stick tape. <laughs>